Okay, so I'm going to do this real quick to hopefully help anybody that needs a walkthrough of this. Um, when you're on the Maker's World and you download, you're going to click this and you're going to hit Download STL CAD file. And it's going to be this top one. Someone told me I put it in the wrong spot. I might move it, but it should be in that drop-down menu somewhere. Um, so you're going to go ahead and hit Download on that one. This is the one that you want. It is a F3D um, file, which I have now learned is the one that everybody was wanting. Um, so now I have that in my downloads. And I just go over to Autodesk Fusion. Um, I do have some special settings, but I don't have that much. I am brand new to this too. I've just started to learn it. So I'm definitely not proficient to the point where I can say, yeah, this is exactly how you do it. Um, so yeah, we're going to open this up. And let's see here. Sorry, you get to see all my files. There we go. This is the one we want, so we just open that. And what's really cool about these files is it gives us the entire history. So what's really cool is that they even gave this to us, for starters. But second of all, now you get to see the exact timeline of everything they did. The problem that everybody's having is there's different parts of it during the steps that you are not referring to, where you need to refer to a previous step uh, measurements. Uh, they're called constraints. And again, I'm not an expert, but um, constraints. And, you know, to give them a credit, like Scott and, and um, Overwork, it's like, it's amazing that they even gave us these files. And it's also very clean and very easy to understand what they did. Um, so I spent a lot of time on it, basically rebuilding it with them so that I could see exactly where those spots were. They just didn't account for everybody wanting an iPhone from, you know, the tiny iPhone minis all the way up to the, you know, Pro Maxes. So that's part of the problem, um, that people are having or running into when they're using his file or whenever they're using someone's file that they haven't went back and gone through the steps and actually changed the constraints. So anyways, this should be what you see when you open it. Um, it's called something stupid on mine, so I'm sorry. Uh, but in on this one, you just basically, um, all you have to do is go to Modify, Change Parameters. Okay. So this is where I don't know how to change the names of things, but luckily, you know, you will you can see, you just toggle everything down. Just keep toggling and you'll find it. There is the iPhone profile. So this is where you're going to do the link. I am going to be uploading new ones with new numbers that I think will work. I've been testing them, and I'm pretty sure that these are the good numbers. Praying, because, oh my gosh, I am so over <laughs> trying to figure out phone models and sizes. So I am going to go ahead and just do, I'm on a 15. I'm going to show you that I can even do the minis. So um, this is where, you know, the constraints were okay for a while not having them, but then when you got to the, to the broad ranges, that's where it started to air out for everybody. So on here, it's going to say automatic compute. You can uncheck that if you want. Um, if you don't, when you put in the link and you, you move down to the next one, you will see it's going to try to compute it, and it might have an error, and you'll see the error down here. But just keep going and then hit OK. So for iPhone 12 mini um, and iPhone 13 mini, uh, you're going to put in the link, which is we're going to go with this right here, 132.5. And then you tab over, click down, and you'll see in the background there it's computing it. Um, and then I'm going to do the button clearance, and we're going to do the larger button clearance, so 67.2, which is adding 2 millimeters, so 67.2. And there you go. It's doing it right there. You'll see it all down there. My computer can't handle recording the screen and using Autodesk at the same time, so sorry. Um, so yeah, there you go. And now it should be sized correctly. I sliced this test off um, at the end, and I'll give you, I'm updating the file to have this as well, um, but it's going to change sizes. And if I had been off of it, you might have been able to see it actually change sizes with it because it's constrained to its parent, which is that one. So yeah, um, I can go ahead and try. Um, hoping that, you know, I can prove that this works. Um, I'm going to try to do the biggest one I can find, which would be... 160 the iPhone 15 plus so we're gonna go here iPhone 15 plus 161.9 oops sorry 161.9 tab over and you see it computing down here yours is probably gonna be so fast you may not even see it but there you'll see the link change I don't know if you saw that 
And then um, this one for the 15 plus is going to be, we're going to go with 88. So that's quite a jump. So 88. And it's computing it. There you go. So now it's updated. You might still want to look it over and see if it looks okay. But it didn't throw up any errors, so it should be good. Um, let's see. I've got it on a visual where you can see the lines, but we can change that to visible edges only. And yeah, there you go. I do see it did kind of lose one thing. It lost the curve down here. This, oh wait, no, it's curved. So yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, and then if you want to export it, then I, like I said, I'm not an Autodesk Fusion expert, so you might want to look up the tutorial after this part. But um, yeah, so if you want to export it and get it ready to print for an STL, you can do export or 3D print. And then you know want you to choose a selection so I can start with the body um, and then I would hit okay don't do send the printer unless you are connected and there you go you hit okay and you can save it as an STL so that's that's how you can do it and you hit save and it'll be ready to go and you can slice it up all good um, the way I have been doing it is separate um, there is a way if you want to highlight all of them and export them together you can but I just like to do every file individually so I can lay it on the bed how I want it um, so again like I just want to show you real quick because you might not notice it but you do 3d print and you click the clicker and that's an individual one too so you need to print all three if you want to do the test which I would recommend so you don't waste a lot of filament um, that's how you do it Oh, and one last thing, I guess I should show you how to change the, um, I'm so sorry. Ah, my computer is just having a heart attack. Um, uh, okay, we're going to go, I can do the MagSafe charger. I should show you that too. Um, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go to what I, I think I should do. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it. It's like 0.3 over what Scott in Overwork put. Um, but anyway, it doesn't say MagSafe, so you're going to have to click down here. If you know what you're doing, you probably can find it faster. But for me, I'm just, it's just easier just to toggle these open and try to find the MagSafe. There it is. This is it. Diameter, so Sketch 7 Diameter Dimensions. I don't know how to change names on someone else's for some reason. But yeah, this is where you can change it. So I'm going to go with 56.4. Um, so 56.4. And you'll see it update over here. It's pretty small, so you might not see much. But yep, yeah, now it's updated. Oh, this one got a lock warning. So I'm going to fix that before I upload it. But I know exactly what that is. Because, again, I get to know this file very well. Um, do remember, you know, like, I hope everybody understands I'm just doing this just to help everybody out. I think it's awesome. And I love this design. And I totally respect that this is not mine. Um, I'm just hoping that, you know, messing with the file a little bit made it easier for everybody to convert it to their phones. Um, this should not happen for you, so this shouldn't be a problem. Um, but basically, it's just saying it's multiple selections, so I just have to fix this real quick. But, yeah. Um, I think that's all. I'm, I'm going to fiddle with this for a minute, but it shouldn't have this problem because I'm going to fix it um, to, this, to the AMF. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, I'm actually going to go ahead and do this just because this might happen to somebody. I don't think it will since I'm going to fix it, but if it does, this is how you would fix the loft air for loft 2. This is how you do it. So when you open it up, I will have things turned off. So you'll want to turn your object visibility, all work features on, and you'll need to be able to see the hidden edges. So shaded with hidden edges. And then this is where Fusion drives me up the wall so far. I am trying to learn this program and it is uh, very fun with layers and sketches. So basically what I did is turn on all the sketches and everything, and then you're going to take this, and this is the timeline where you can see exactly how they made it. You right click on it and you do edit feature. Um, it'll show you the warning. You can hit more info, it'll tell you what's wrong, if the form didn't perform, blah blah blah. Um, looks like it's saying my rail is not touching anything. I realize I should probably just show you guys how to do this. Um, I think this is actually good. I don't know what's mad about. What are you mad about? Okay, so I'm going to clear these out. 
I'm just like, forget it. And I don't know if it was Scott and Aurora did, or whoever did it, um, the profiles, they did the bottom one first. So you're ready to select it. And left clicking and holding it down um, will get you the different, sorry, I had to click plus. Now I'm ready to get selected. Um, and basically what we want is this face on. And we want the very bottom one. So there are so many layers um, to go through now. So you left click and hold, and you can get to the other layers. This one actually only has one, so that's perfect. So this is combining them automatically. I left click on both of them, and then we're gonna go up here, and you can hit plus up here, but it should automatically tell you that it's gonna let you select profile two. And this is where you want the second layer because we do not want the top to be exposed. So you hold the left button down, and you get selections of everything that you're on top of. So we want that face right there. I don't know if you can see a highlight. There you go. We don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. We want that. So it's there. Perfection. And that's is where, for some reason, not having the rail works. So is it okay? And you're good to go. So yeah, now it has its hold. I don't see any other warning signs. If you see anything, it will be here, I think. And then it will highlight it in yellow on the timeline what is messed up. But hopefully you will not have that problem. And then you can turn the sketches off. And it's back to pretty. And you can also take away the uh, wire and the hidden edges. There you go. Ta-da! And now it is ready for the biggest phone. So yeah. Thanks again, guys. Thank you for your patience. And I hope this helps. Uh, I've had a blast learning all of uh, these things. It's doing this it was a big project. And I don't know why I decided to do it, but I just did. And it was really fun because it definitely challenged me to learn a whole bunch of different things. And I also got to see how somebody who knows what they're doing, uh, the steps that they did. So, yeah. Thanks, guys.